to Word Studies with Dr. Ray Winston, a powerful and in-depth study of the Word of God. Dr. Ray? In 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, welcome to Word Studies. I am Dr. Ray, and I want to thank God for the opportunity to study with you the ever-living Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Welcome again to Word Studies. On this program, we study in depth the words of God. Recently, we have been studying on the pneumaticon. Pneumaticon, of course, is a Greek word for spiritual things, spiritual matters, things of the spirit. In particular, we're going to be looking at something that is, is, is absolutely on the beaten path. Uh, however, we may omit it until this time of the year, if you will. Of course, this is the uh, what was so-called, quote-unquote, holiday season. Actually, we're celebrating the birth of our, of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua in the Hebrew, Yeshua, Jesus in English, yeah? We're celebrating his birth, and there's nothing wrong with celebrating it. Because, because if he had not been born, of course, we would all be lost forever. Yes. So, therefore, we celebrate the fact of the matter that he was born. Yeah. He he was born of the birth Virgin Mary, actually. Her name in, in Hebrew, of course, is Miriam. And, of course, Mary uh, Miriam spoke Hebrew. Therefore, we know that uh, when the angel appeared to her, as it says in either Matthew, well, in Matthew uh, uh, and uh, Luke, yeah, when the angel appeared to her, of course, he spoke uh, a Hebrew to uh, Miriam. Now, we we're going to find out, though, however, that the Jesus was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. Now, I, I exactly how long ago uh, Isaiah prophesied? Perhaps 3,000 years ago, maybe, more or less. Yeah, we know it was more than 2,000 years ago, for sure. And, uh, uh, of course, Isaiah was talking in, in, in the book of Isaiah. Yeah, written by Isaiah, if you will. In Isaiah chapter 7, if you will, we're going to look at verse, verse 10. Isaiah 7, verse 10. Notice what the Lord is doing. Now, you know, many times we think that, well, God doesn't tell us anything. He just does things, and therefore, you know, we don't know. I didn't know that God was going to do that or the other. No, that's not true. God has always spoken to his prophets through his word, yes? Now, the Bible says he's spoken through his son to us. Now, he speaks to us through his son, Yeshua Jesus. Now, notice uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz. Now, Ahaz was a leader in those days, perhaps a king. Yeah, was Ahaz. And uh, notice what he's uh, saying to Ahaz. He wants to help Ahaz uh, so that Ahaz knows what's going on. But notice what happened. <clears throat> Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Now, he's trying to help Ahaz out so that Ahaz knows what God is doing. You know that many times we say, well, I don't know what God's doing. So, so whatever God says is okay, but I don't know what he's doing. But God wants us to know what's going on. Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. Wherever you are, Ahaz, if you're upon a mountain, ask. If you're, if you're at the bottom of the sea scuba diving, Ahaz, ask for this sign. Notice what Ahaz does, though. Okay, but Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. You know, many times God wants us to test him, yeah? Like in the book of Malachi, he said, Prove me in this if I will not open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing in which there's not room enough for you to receive, if you obey my commandments, that is. Remember? 
that, that's in Malachi chapter 3 if you want to read about, about uh, God actually asking to be tested. Yeah, notice. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Now, God wants us to test him, yeah, so that we can know that we know that we know that we know that he is faithful, yes, and will do whatever he says in his word. Notice. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David, this is God talking, is it a small thing for you to weary men? Notice. But will you weary my God also? Well, actually, it's Isaiah saying it. But will you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord will give. Notice, if you want to ask for a sign, God is going to do it anyway. Whatever God is planning to do, He's going to do it, no matter whether you or whether you want to be involved, as it were, or not. Whether you want to be in the ministry or not, God's going to do what He's going to do. Yes, you're not going to stop Him. But I'll stop God. You know, I'll, I'll just not do it, as it were. Notice verse fourteen. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Now, you know, he's giving it to you. Even though Ahaz said, no, I won't ask for it. I won't do anything. I don't want it. You know, many times people will say, I don't want whatever it is that God's got. Yeah? I, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah? But notice, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold. You know that word behold? Behold it usually means something good or something different. Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, perhaps a miracle. And I know that there are people who don't believe in miracles. <laughs> well, I've written a book on miracles. I'm going to publish it one day when God allowed me to, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Now somebody said, well, maybe it's not good enough. But you know what? Anything that God allows you to do and uh, that uh, he is a part of is good enough. Yeah? It may not be good enough for you in your eyes. It may not be good enough for that person in their eyes. But it's good enough for God. And if it's good enough for God, guess what? It's good enough for me. Notice. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold. Notice. I stopped on behold. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Now, this had never happened in the history of all the world. Now, you might say, okay, there, was, there were cultures more than 3,000 years old, even the Chinese cultures, the Japanese cultures, many, many other cultures are much more than 3,000 years old. Yes? Notice. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Now, somebody might say to me, well, that's impossible. You talk to any doctor or, or, or any medical person, yeah, any knowledgeable person in the medical field, they would tell you, well, that is virtually, yeah, impossible for a virgin to conceive and bear a son. Now, I don't mean a virgin that had come together with a, a, a man, yeah. She's had a relationship with a man, yeah. She could uh, conceive and bear a son. But we're talking about a virgin who had not, who had not been with a man who was going to conceive and bear a son. We're going to find out later who was, uh, who was the father then of that son. Notice. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name what? Im Anu El. Okay. That's Hebrew for Emmanuel. <clears throat> and it means what? God with us. Im Anu El. <laughs> yeah. God is with us. Yeah. And a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Notice what verse 15 says. Curds and honey he shall eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now, this is uh, his uh, diet, I suppose, curd. Do you know what curds are? Somebody said, I don't know what curds are. <clears throat> Did you ever have a clabber milk? You know what clabber milk is? Milk. 
clabber milk. Clabber milk is, yeah. You know what clabber milk is? Yeah. Okay, how do you get clabber milk? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, you know how you get buttermilk, yes. You churn, you know, you take that uh, thing and you, you punch it up and down in that uh, round uh uh, churner, you just go up and down, up and down, and you get butter on the on the top, and then the meat milk that's left below. We used to call it sweet milk, if you will. Yeah. <clears throat> now, now, okay. What about the clabber though? How do you get the clabber out of all of that concoction of uh, butter milk, sweet milk, butter, and all of that? And then you can get clabber. It's almost like. Uh, there's another name for for something that people eat nowadays, but I, I can't remember the name of it. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> uh, you can get curds. Yeah, that's when clabber. Cl that's when regular milk has come almost to the point. It, it's been uh, uh, brought to the to almost to the uh, sporting uh, stage, if you will. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's like wine. You know, you have to uh, wine has to has to be uh, you know fermented. A uh, grape juice maybe has to be fermented, then it becomes wine. Well, fermented uh, milk, buttermilk, or, or it has to be fermented and it becomes a uh, curd, if you will. Now, somebody said, well, I don't agree with that, Dr. Ray. Well, if you know, yeah, call me and tell me what it is then. Yeah, I'm listening. I, I won't refuse. Curds and honey. You know what honey is? Yeah. Where does honey come from? Because somebody asked me that once. Well, where does honey? Who? How, can you raise honey? Yeah. Can you manufacture uh, honey? <laughs> no. Honey is something that God has already manufactured, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Now you can make it in the different forms or likenesses, if you will, but you can't actually, uh, uh, as it were, like you can invent a car. Where well, you cannot invent honey. Yeah, it's already there. It comes out of a tree. There's a honey tree. Okay. Courage and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now, who is this that's going to eat the honey and the courage? That's Jesus, yeah? When he's growing up as a baby, you know, you feed baby milk and the stuff like that, and sweet, uh, if you're going to sweeten it, you're going to sweeten it with honey in those days, some 2,000 years ago, yeah? <clears throat> okay, now, notice, if you will, <clears throat> he shall eat honey and curd that he don't know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Okay, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, notice what will happen before he can do it, yeah? The land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. Now, what land is that? You know that we're talking. Are we talking about Jerusalem? Are we talking about Judah? Yeah. Are we talking about Israel? The Lord will bring the king of Assyria upon you and your people and your father's house. Days that have not come since the day. Of Ephraim, that Ephraim departed from Judah. Now you know, okay, we're talking about the Israel or Judah, and things, bad things are going to happen. Notice, and it shall come to pass. You know, many times when it, when it says, and it shall come to pass, that means that it hasn't happened, and it's going to happen in the future. Yes. So I said, are you telling us, Doctor? We know that, and it shall come to pass in that day. That future day that the Lord will whistle for the fly that is in the farthest part of the rivers of Egypt. Okay, what is that talking about, Dr. Ray? I don't get that, you know. I, I understand about uh, it'll come to pass in the future, but I don't know what you're talking about now. Well, the, the, where the fly that is in the farthest part of the rivers of Egypt. Remember when the children of Israel were in Egypt and they were slaves in Egypt? Yeah. And then the Lord brought 10 different strikes, if you will, if you want to call them that, or or 
I, I'm trying to think of the other word. Curses might be a better word, yeah? Upon, uh, upon Egypt. Uh, because Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt, would not let the children of Israel go. So, <laughs> Egypt was, was cursed with flies, with frogs, with blood, and various other curses upon Egypt. And, of course, he's talking about the flies. There were flies everywhere. Have you ever lived in a place where there were excessive flies? I mean, they were flying all over the place. I, I remember I couldn't stand flies, even when I lived in a house that didn't have the, the proper uh, 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 screen so on, the, uh, on the windows. And, of course, you had to open the window in, in the summertime because you didn't have air conditioning, so flies would come in, too. Yeah? And I was constantly killing flies. You know, I'd fly swat, 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 killing all those flies. The guy couldn't stand flies. Yeah. Fortunately, in Southern California, flies... Or, or, or not that prominent, if you will. We don't have that many flies here. So, therefore, that's a good reason to live in California. Yeah, no flies, Southern California. Okay, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria, they will come and all of them will rest in the desolate, desolate valleys and the clefts of the rocks and all thorns and in pastures, in the same day, the Lord will shave with a hired razor. What's a hired razor? It's a barber, isn't it? Yeah. With those from beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the legs, and will also remove the beard. Now, you might think that, well, okay, Dr. Ray, so we shave today, don't we? Don't we shave off our beard, you know, and shave the, the hair off of our faces? Well, okay, in those days, some 3,000 or more years ago, a man without a beard was considered to be uh, 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 unmanly. Yeah, if you were without a beard. There was a time when David sent uh, 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 messengers into a country, and uh, David w w wanted to make peace with those people. But what they did with his mess messengers is they shaved off their head, shaved off their beard, and sent them back, and that made them uh, 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 uncomfortable, or, or if you will, they were made a spectacle without their beards in those days. Okay. Now, we know that today, of course, many men wear beards and, and uh, you know, mustaches and so forth like that. Uh, that would be kind of uh, not the, uh, the, the, the most prominent in nowadays. Uh, men wear uh, their shave. You know, Gillette <laughs> has become a multi multi millionaire a company with razors. And they're, they're, every year they come up with a different kind of razor that will do something that the last razor that they had didn't do. Yeah. Okay. They would have been in trouble back there some 3,000 years ago because men wore, wore beards. Now, <clears throat> I was talking about the fact, though, that Ahaz refused God, and God said, okay, that he himself, yeah, <clears throat> would do what Ahaz would not allow God to do. Remember? He asked Ahaz to do what? Let's go back up there and find out what God asked Ahaz to do that Ahaz, that Ahaz would not do, okay? He said, Ahaz, ask a sign for yourself. Now, later on, the Jews, they wanted signs, short a sign, if you will, yeah? That came later, but Ahaz didn't want to do it, and God wanted to do it, okay? Now, that sign was a prophecy of the birth of the Son of God, Yeshua, Jesus. Notice, this is in Isaiah also, where I'm going to look at right now. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, yeah? Notice, Isaiah chapter 9, we're going to look at verse 6. Many of you know these scriptures, don't you? Yeah, letting you know that Jesus, of course, had been prophesied more than perhaps 3,000 years before he was born, perhaps. Say between 1,000 and 3,000 years before he was born. Actually, he was prophesied in the book of Genesis. So therefore, yeah, 
And, of course, the Bible says that Jesus was slain or killed before the foundation of the world. What does that mean, Dr. Ray? That God knew what we were going to do when we got here. Yeah. So he had already given up his son for us. Now, when you read John 3.16, you think, well, okay, this only happened 2,000 years ago that uh, he gave up his son for us. That's not true. Yeah. Before the foundation of the world. Jesus was slain for us, not for his sake, not because he had done anything wrong. It was because we had done something wrong, or God knew that we were going to do something wrong, as it were. Yeah. It's like foreknowledge. God knows everything. Yeah, He's omniscient, if you will. So therefore, he knew before we got here, before the, the globe spun around this earth, Yeah, all the stars and all that stuff out there, before the foundation of the world, Jesus had already been slain in the eyes of God. Notice, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Now, this is another prophecy way back there with Isaiah the prophet. Now, remember, Isaiah was considered to be a major prophet. You know, they, God doesn't say major or minor, <clears throat> but we have said, okay, if you're a major prophet— and there are minor prophets, yeah? Isaiah happened to be one of the major prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, yeah? Okay, name me a minor prophet, if you will, then, okay? Now, I don't want to pick on Jonah, but Jonah was considered to be a minor prophet because many times people will pick on Jonah because God told Jonah, commanded Jonah, yeah, to do something. And Jonah said, no, 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 I'm going on vacation. And that's what Jonah did, yeah? Have you ever been on a vacation on a, on a cruise ship or something like that? Yeah, you're in the middle of the ocean? It, it didn't storm, did it? No. But when Jonah got on there, you, you know, they had a problem, right? Now, you know, you, you see storms all the time. You say, okay, storms happen all the time. Are they caused by God or the devil? You might think they were caused by the devil, yes. <clears throat> Remember the movie, The Perfect Storm? Well, you would think, okay, that storm wasn't caused by God, you know, because he knew that ship was out there and that those men were going to die, yeah. Well, you know, God has the ability, yeah, to do anything whenever he chooses to do it for whatever purpose. We don't necessarily always know the purpose, but we did. He explained the purpose why the storm started, yeah, the, the, the very violent storm when Jonah was on that ship. One day we'll look at Jonah. Notice. Notice Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us, us who? Unto the whole world, yeah. Unto us a child is born. Somebody may say, well, so, <laughs> you know, children are born every day. You know, there's a baby coming out right now. Yeah, they're slapping a the baby on the behind, and he screams and all that stuff, and he's born. Okay. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, a child being born, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, there are many children are born. But <clears throat> unto us a son is given. Now, normally... Under normal circumstances, unless somebody got screwed loose or something like that, you don't give away your son, do you? No. Most men, yeah, if they have a child, they want it to be a boy. Yeah, I, I, I want a boy. I want a son. You know, that, that I can carry on my name or something or other like that. Yeah. Well, there are some names that perhaps shouldn't be carried on. <laughs> carried on like, like Hitler. If he had a Hitler had a son, you don't have to carry on that name. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Unto us a son is given. And. It explains who this son is that is being born and given. All right? It doesn't just let us hang there. Yeah, notice. And the government will be upon his shoulders, the shoulders of that son that is born and given. The government will be upon his shoulder. And they even give us his name. And his name will be called Wonderful. Do you know anybody who's named their child, child Wonderful? Yeah. You know, somebody might say, well, Stevie Wonderful. <laughs> Stevie Wonder, yeah. Or you just add full on the end of it, and you got Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, I know that nobody has called their son uh, Counselor and or, in particular, Mighty God. Mighty God. Everlasting, everlasting Father. I mean, everlasting. Everlasting means never ending. That's forever. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Now, we've read in the Bible over and over and over who the Prince of Peace is. Yes? Yeah. That's Jesus. It's talking about Jesus. Now, you're going to have to go out and hire somebody to help you to misunderstand this scripture. Yes? As a matter of fact, you may have to hire two people because one wouldn't be good enough to mess your mind up about this, who, is, who it's talking about. It's talking about the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, the Mighty God. Yeshua, Jesus, is who it's talking about. So those people that tell you, well, Jesus isn't God, ignore them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, You know, it, it may not even be a matter of right and wrong. It's just a matter of the truth. <laughs> yeah, the truth of the matter is that Jesus is God, manifested in the flesh. Yes. Okay. There will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. Now, <clears throat> let me stop right there. I'll put a period there. Now, Jesus comes out of, if you will, the, uh, what? How, how can I say it? You know, sometimes you say, okay, you don't even know what you, how to say what you want to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus was in the line of royalty. Yeah. Coming from David down through Solomon and all the other kings of Israel. Jesus was in that line. How did he get in that kingly line, Dr. Ray? Through his mother or through his father? Yeah, you could say through both, but Joseph, his father, was in that kingly line. His stepfather, you might say, was in that kingly line, right? And, of course, Jesus also was in that line to be the king through his mother, Miriam. Okay? Miriam, Mary, if you will. Now, that would, that would require us to go through the genealogies because there are two genealogies of Jesus. Yes? One in the book of Matthew and the other one in the book of what? In the book of Luke. Yeah? The genealogies of Jesus. Telling you where his mother came from through her genealogies, and his stepfather, Joseph. Now, we know who his real father was, is, <laughs> yeah, the Lord, the Lord, God Almighty, yes. Okay, now, we're going to find out the exact day that Jesus was born. It, you know, we say he was born in December. It, well, okay, that, that that's probably correct, yeah, but we need to know why we say December, yeah, because the Bible doesn't say, okay, Jesus was born in on December 25th, uh, uh, 2000 and, uh, uh, well, 2,000 years ago. It doesn't say that uh, uh, it specifically, does it? No. Well, God leaves us an opportunity, yes, to use the gray matter that he's given us. Yeah. So, therefore, uh, okay, let them do it. By doing it, then, we'll find out more and more about our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus. Yeah. And we're going to do that. Now, I need to mention the fact of my name, the fact of the matter of what my name is. You might say, well, who is that preacher? My name is Dr. Ray. Yeah. And we have a church that's located at 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California. Guess what? We have a service there every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. sharp. We don't start early, we don't start late, we start on time, yeah? Till 10.30 a.m. Okay. You know what? We're out of time. If this program has been a blessing to you and your family or has helped you in any way, please feel free to write to us and pray for us. Remember also, we need and appreciate your financial support. Please send your financial gifts and love offerings to Dr. Ray Winston at P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. That's Dr. Ray Winston, P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. You also 
may call Dr. Ray at area code 310-559-8320 or 800-747-8320. Remember also, God loves a cheerful giver. 